Well, first of all, Seva's Caribbean spiny lobster is extremely special, not only because of its yummy taste, but because of its behavior. I mean, it uses this great big place and why would it come to Seba and not another island? Well, there's more to tell on that one. The Seba Bank is the third largest submerged atoll in the Atlantic. Did you know that? It is extremely special. And why is it also so special? Well, it's one of the fishing grounds for our Seba fishermen. It has a lot of culture, it has a lot of history, and most importantly, because of this fishing ground, it provides a migration route for the Caribbean spiny lobster. So that's why they're coming to the Seba Bank as well. And yeah, there's a lot of ground to play on. Seba fishermen historically have always had a sustainable practice and not necessarily because they've been told so. It's been instinct. The mothers who have eggs and made sure they're not to take them or harvest them so that's a sustainable practice, which is really important. And ensuring that, you know, the smaller lobsters can be released. Well, the future of Seba's uh, fishery with the lobster heavily depends on, okay, how are fishermen doing? How is the lobster doing, most importantly? And I think if we connect those, study those, and make sure that they continue their sustainable practices, we can ensure that it remains on the menu. Hi, my name is Tom Brokke, and I'm a park officer for the Seba Bank Management Unit, which is part of uh, the Seba Conservation Foundation. So lobsters are actually quite good for the underwater climate. Um, so they feed on macroalgae. Uh, macroalgae are, of course, in competition with the coral reefs. So as soon as they graze the macroalgae away, coral reefs have more space to grow. Uh, which is quite good. They're very important for the food chain. So they basically feed on the smaller crustaceans and keep those populations in check. And they're also a very important food source for like sharks uh, and bigger fish species. And next to that, they also create burrows and holes in the, in the, on the Seba bank, uh, which other species can also use for, uh, to avoid predation, basically as a shelter. So basically lobsters start out as a, an larval stage where they uh, basically float around in the water column as plankton until they're big enough to settle. Uh, and after settlement, they basically settle in like a, a bed of macroalgae where they avoid predation from bigger fish. Uh, and after they get through that phase and they get about to that size probably, uh, they will move into a crevice or a shelter uh, where they will continue to grow for two years until they reach adulthood. And after adulthood, they can start making baby lobsters. So of course, the famous lobster that everyone knows, I would say is the main lobster, which has the big claws and they have shorter antenna. Uh, but when we look at the lobsters over here, they don't have those big claws and they have only very tiny little claws. Uh, they don't have, or they have way larger antennas to feel around with. Um, and yeah, they have a different habitat. Uh, they get different age, they taste different even. So there's a bunch of differences. So when it comes to the Seba Bank, the lobster fisheries, uh, they need to have at least a 95 millimeter carapace length. Uh, that means that the length of the shell needs to be at least 95 millimeters, and that's measured from between the eyes till, till the back of the shell. Uh, next to that, you can also not take pregnant females, or basically females with eggs. Uh, as soon as you take those out of the water and you see like the orange little eggs in the back, you have to throw it back into the water. And in general, I would say that the Seba fishermen comply with it. And so after 2013, when the Seba Bank was established as a national park, they stopped doing that and then the lobster regulations got into place. My name is Augustine Hall. This is my dad, Ivan. We've been fishing for lobster, I got like 23 years. My dad's over 40. My first experience was when we start fishing and catching lobsters, maybe 40, 50 lobsters for day that was a lot of them, them years. Working with my dad as a experience. Saw the drops coming up with my dad and start, I just liked it. Last 40 years, I've probably been fishing constantly for lobsters. But in the first years, we only fished a couple of months and then we stopped. And after we started fishing constantly, like almost 40 years now. And it's very important for the, for the livelihood and for the Selling some martins, that's our biggest market. Like supply keeps we going all year long and we can do good.
is important. But we sell more laps though. Yeah, you have hand boat, a couple of hundred kilos, a couple of thousand kilos or more a year. We've got many thousand kilos a year. We have like maybe three to four different types of traps he uses. And bait wise, we use usually is cowhide. Well, some guys use square traps. Some days is slow, some days are great. We love to see the great days. My favorite lobster dish has two aspects to it. First of all, my father used to be a lobster fisherman, which is very special to me. And he used to make me um, the baked lobster fish and just coat it in garlic butter. And for me, that's the best. Mm, if I would have to choose one dish, it would probably be a good lobster pasta because I love pasta. My life, wife likes to cook like a curry lobster. I love that. I like a lobster, I mean, just boil it, take it out on the shell, squeeze lime on it, and eat it just like that. It's really tasty. Me, I don't have nearly any lobster dish. I love to see you, catch them, sell them. Be sure to taste Sabre's delicious spiny lobster. 17 different restaurants across the island. This rum and lobster fest from November 6th to the 12th.